This lecture is brought to you by biceps brachii. Why is it called biceps? It's called biceps because it has two heads across your shoulder here. Its antagonistic muscle group crosses behind the elbow and behind the shoulder, the triceps. It has three heads, biceps, triceps. Your quadriceps in your thigh have four heads, so you can see biceps, triceps, quadriceps. Pretty easy naming. But why biceps brachii? Well, it turns out we also have a biceps femoris in our leg. So we call it bicep femoris for the leg, biceps brachii for the upper extremity. So biceps generates a flexion moment about the elbow. So it flexes your elbow, but it, I mentioned it also crosses in front of the shoulder. So it produces a flexion moment about the shoulder. Those are its obvious functions, but interestingly, the way it attaches about the elbow, it also produces a supination moment. So you use it to make an action like screwing tightening in a screwdriver. Its moment arm gets bigger as you flex your elbow. Its supination moment arm enlarges. That's why we don't screw in screws with our elbow extended. We usually bend a little bit intuitively. Our brain knows what the moment arms are so that we can screw in more powerfully. Now, I'm showing this image taken here of these green sarcomeres. So sarcomeres, you know, are the basic building blocks of muscles and their striped pattern gives skeletal muscle its name, striated muscle. And the distance between these stripes says how long the sarcomeres, the basic building blocks are. It indicates where they are on their force length curve. Gabriel Sanchez, Mike Llewellyn, Mark Schnitzer and I invented a microscope that you can insert into muscle and see for the first time these sarcomeres in living humans. We can see how long they are and whether the muscle can be too long, too short, why it's weak or why it's strong. So that's biceps brachii. We'll talk about that more in future lectures.